Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Paul Richardson and I'm the uh, Clinical Program Leader and Director of Clinical Research at the Jerome Lipper Multiple Myeloma Center uh, at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. In terms of an overview of the ASCO meeting, I think that um, this ASCO meeting has been an exciting one for myeloma, not least of which because there was some very exciting information uh, presented on the results of um, CAR-T therapy in very refractory patients. There's a particularly noteworthy presentation from my colleague, Dr. Nupa Rajay, uh, who is one of the lead investigators in the current BB2121 study, looking at the role of the CAR-T platform in highly refractory patients um, in whom really no other reasonable options exist. And what she showed was not only a striking response rate, but she also showed um, that the progression-free survival for these very sick patients without meaningfully valuable other options available to them in the main um, was particularly impressive. Overall for the study, it was approximately 12 months. And importantly, um, in those patients uh, who had achieved MRD, it was even better. Now, I have to stress though, these results remain relatively early. And the side effect profile that she reported was also, uh, I think, quite uh, encouraging in the sense that most of the side effects encountered proved manageable, although obviously there's a lot to learn um, with CAR-T therapy going forward. Nonetheless, we think this is a very important first step um, for this approach, and obviously with the addition of other uh, strategies like monoclonal antibodies, next generation IMIDs, and all these other exciting new drugs that are in our current development pipeline, we're very hopeful that CAR-T therapy uh, will continue to fulfill its promise and provide a very important salvage strategy for those patients in whom no other options exist, but then most importantly, can be brought forward uh, into earlier use um, to even improve outcome that much more. Now, in terms of the rest of the meeting, there was lots of exciting data presented by a variety of investigators, but I think some of the most noteworthy um, were in the context of how better to use carfilzomib on a once-weekly basis. This was particularly interesting in my view. There was also excellent data about how to use venetoclax uh, for translocation 1114 patients in combination with proteasome inhibitors. There were other phase one, early phase studies um, that provided, I think, some insights into some new directions in terms uh, of therapy. There was also a very important overview by the FDA as to why um, the pembrolizumab studies incorporating both pomalidomide and lenalidomide ran into such difficulties and unfortunately had to be closed with some important lessons for us uh, in the future. Finally, I wanted to acknowledge the contribution of a, one of my co-investigators with his excellent presentation on the combination of Pomveldex plus Ilatuzumab. My colleague from Mass General, Andy Yi, presented a poster uh, at the meeting in which he showed the activity of this uh, four-drug platform uh, in particularly refractory patients in which a solid response rate of around 53% was seen with some high quality responses and excellent tolerability. Um, despite the fact that in this study there were a number of patients in whom prior daratumumab treatment had failed and also had had multiple other agents, uh, including pomalidomide, carfilzomib and other drugs. So to see this particular platform both be tolerable and at the same time generate such a nice activity signal um, was particularly encouraging and very reflective of the meeting overall.